Hi, my name is Jeannie, and this is Bisaya in America. So I'm going to be trying out this app. It's、uh, a phone app because the way I was doing my podcasts, I would have to record using a software, an editing software, and then I have to upload it. This one might make it easier, although I don't know how I can add sound effects to this one. I usually have an intro. But, you know, we'll just try the bare bones and stuff. I really want to go on and, and produce more content. So, the topic for today is going to be about, you know, being amazed at America when I was here for like eight years ago. So, I decided on this topic because I remembered a few months ago. I was in this Renaissance fair and I met this Filipino woman, and she she was like, I don't know, I just, you know, when you're Filipino, you just know that when someone's Filipino, you just look at them and I'm like, yeah, that's a Filipino there. I, I don't know. 99% of the time, I'm always right.、Um, sometimes、I'm, I could be wrong if they have, like, they look Filipino, but they're not. But 99% of the time, I just know. And especially when they start speaking, maybe it's the accent, maybe it's the way they just talk.、Um, I, I don't know. It's just. Uh, my grandmother called it before Luxo ng Dugo, which means your, your,、um, your blood jumps or something. It's like your heart ski- skips a beat.、Um, and this happened in Europe as well.、Uh, many years ago, we were just randomly like walking around like tourists, you know. And this Filipina from the street just asked us, Hey, are you guys Filipino? I said, And like I asked, like, how did you know? And she said, you know, you just know. <laughs> so, anyway, so I was at a rent fair in Texas and I was just walking around. And then this woman that I don't know how we managed to bump into each other, I forgot, but I just asked her, you, Are you Filipino? And she said, Yeah. And she's just visiting and it's her first time. And she's so excited and she was so very excited. And at that time, I was like with a companion and like she was saying, like, Oh, you two look good together. And I'm like, Oh, thank you.、Um, just reminds me like her enthusiasm, just reminded me of my enthusiasm when I first came to America. And that was like around eight years ago. And I do remember I came here with my friend Art.、Uh, we're now friends for life.、Uh, we didn't come on a boat, but we came on a plane together. We were shipped from the Philippines to America. And I remembered,、uh, I remember that when、uh, we first landed in Maryland, we were like so amazed, like, oh my God, this is America. And I think even like on the plane, we were on a Delta plane. And it was like, oh my God, this is like, we're going to America. And then、um, I think when we got our first apartment, it was like, oh my God, this is our first apartment. Oh, oh my God, this is like,、um, I think we landed in Detroit at that time,、uh, our first、uh, connecting flight. And then our first meal in America was a Taco Bell. And it was really bad. And I didn't want to say anything. We just ordered something random. I don't even know what I ordered. It, was, it had egg in it. It was horrible. And anyway, we were like, oh my God, this is our first meal together in America. We were so excited. And then、uh, because we、uh, didn't find our first like, job assignment right away,、so、it took a couple of weeks.、Uh, I really forgot how many weeks it was. But we were just like waiting you know, to be deployed. <laughs> And then I remember we went outside and we were, we saw squirrels for the first time. And I, and like we were like, oh my God, that's a squirrel. I mean, that's amazing. That, that's our first ever squirrel in America. And I remembered we walked to 7 Eleven. We would walk to 7 Eleven because we didn't have a car yet. We, don't, we didn't know how to take the bus. So we walked everywhere. And I think. Art was our navigator, so he, he knew how to use Google Maps. And I was like, What's Google Maps? I mean, I, I, I used it 
years ago, but I didn't really use it. Like my life depended on it. But when I started living in America, living and working in America, Google Maps was my, my, um, you know, it's a necessity. Anyway, we would go to 7-Eleven and we're like, oh my God, this is our first like 7-Eleven in America. It's really so funny. And we went to the mall. It was a 20 minute ride. And then, oh, not ride. It was a walk too. And I remember that people would stare at us because we would walk on the street or the road. And apparently like, you know, it doesn't happen a lot. America is a car loving country for some reason. And then the fact that there was like people walking like us, basically like Asian looking people walking on the streets, like we would often like get attention or at least I would think that that was attention. And yeah, it would take us uh, 20 minutes to get from our apartment to our up to the mall and we were so excited like oh this is the first our first mall in america and we we hiked around we walked around a lot and we would visit like neighborhoods and i think there was like a place where there was a lake and there was a hiking route that we would frequent it was really exciting and we were so excited and I think it was our next door neighbor. She was really nice. And I actually still keep in touch with her actually after all these years, which reminds me, I might have to send her a gift um, if she's still living in the same place. But she was wonderful. She, she kept in touch with me, would give me, would give me cards. And at that time she met my first boyfriend and she was, she's amazing. Her name's Michelle, by the way. And she was the one that taught us how to um, use the bus because, like, we were like, "Oh no, we don't know how to use the bus." <laughs> you know, it was. And then instead of walking, we would just use the bus because Michelle helped us. You know, she was very patient with us. She said, "Oh, use this one, and this is the bus state of uh, the not the bus the bus stop, and this is the times that they." St- pick you up and stuff like that and this is the route and then I remember like when I did it on my own I was very scared but because with art we were like inseparable at that time uh he's now living in Indiana and and I think he just worked in Illinois and Indiana as for me I worked everywhere in my eight years in America I really did make the best of it I really like really worked and traveled and lived everywhere but anyway so (laughs) back to our neighbor Michelle so Michelle helped us with everything and then um, I even had my first Thanksgiving dinner with her because I think at that time Art already had left and he was deployed to Illinois I think it was Illinois or I think it was Illinois anyway and she she just helped me and she, uh, she taught me a lot about grocery shopping coupons and she was like our mother you know she she really like basically adopted us would bring us food to eat and then she was such a sweetheart and she still is like we still keep in touch after all these years and yeah we were just so we had that like I don't know like that wide-eyed like curiosity about America and amazement we thought that America uh, America is the land of opportunities and freedom but it's just like um, expectation and reality actually didn't really meet you know especially for me because I saw a lot of the country over the years like I've traveled to many states basically from east to west sorry about that that's my dog she's scratching hey sky hey she's scratching the couch i think you can hear that on the recording so anyway yeah i've seen so much more of the country probably more than art has because i've literally lived in like major cities um i'm now in Texas, but I was at one point working in Manhattan, the Bronx, and, you know, that that place there, you know, the center of the U.S., you could call it, because it's like a lot of people, and it's like a lot of immigrants there, and, 
you know, I have traveled from east to west and have lived in Colorado, New Mexico, and then Texas. Uh, I lived in Virginia, upstate New York, uh, Maryland. So I, 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 I have been around and, you know, just exploring the country. But um, I do remember that. <laughs> I think art has the same sentiment that we did have like an amazement and like we had a high expectation of America. As for me, I thought America was going to be like, whoa, the infrastructure is going to be great, man. <laughs> There's going to be like bullet trains like in Japan. It's like going to be so advanced. The Wi-Fi is going to be like fast. You know, it's going to be really advanced technology and then but having lived in america for eight years um, and seeing like certain towns that are literally like ghost towns and it's like oh no like you know the infrastructure is not where it should be at and it's just expectation is not up to par with reality actually and it's like really been humbling too it's like oh so this is the real america and also you know my expectation that i i lived in jersey oh yeah i i lived in jersey too anyway i forgot about that anyway um yeah living in the east coast where you don't really think you're different you know because people in the east coast they just work you know they don't really care about you know where you're from they just do your work and then to leave that sort of mentality and live in other places in america where you experience like where people actually look at your appearance and where you came from and for me that was very eye-opening you know because i thought like oh america is the land of freedom and opportunity and they're not gonna care if we're immigrants and stuff like that and just to see that other side as well of america where you know your your appearance matters actually or your skin color matters because i really didn't think that america was gonna be like that so it's like so much but i i do love and appreciate america because the thing about America is that it will always keep changing and it's always going to be the ideal, you know. I'm sure there's like tons of countries that um, are, I, I think they're even greater than America, I, I must say, like advanced technologically and the society is working properly. But I think that the, that America is really all about the ideal and the idea of america that's always gonna progress it's always gonna grow it's always gonna change and i think that's a promise of america and yeah if i could choose i wouldn't really want to live in any other country because of that that promise that this country was founded on you know that that promise that there are better opportunities and if there's not better opportunities you make those opportunities and but still there's a part of me that's saying like oh but this is not <laughs> um in alignment with what i really expected and i think that's just gonna be what america is gonna be about it might always have to always try to strive to live to its ideal you know and maybe we'll get there and maybe not so but this this um podcast is really especially this episode is really just remembering how you know how curious i was and how excited i was when i first came to america you know having visited washington dc you know times square um, you know, the Liberty, the Statue of Liberty and all of those uh, iconic places. It's just, uh, 
I remember my first time, and it's just exciting, and it it really meant a lot to me. But now, after having lived here for eight years, it's like, yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I don't know. I want to go back to that time, and maybe it's never gonna come back again. That that wild-eyed idealism that I had, that excitement that I had, that this encounter with this random Filipino woman in Texas, you know, and she was just visiting, and her excitement about America, and, you know, she was still in that phase where she's, and then she's just visiting, I don't think she will ever find out what America, the real America is about, but yeah, it's just, So much about America is about perception and sometimes your perception of America isn't really what's there, you know, but (laughs) I still, I still have really fond memories of working in New York City, trying out bagels, like I have tried out frozen bagels back home in the Philippines before, but, you know, fresh bagels. And then, like, saying to myself, what the heck is this, you know? And not realizing that you are supposed to toast bagels so it tastes better, you know? And I'm, like, discovering that, discovering lox and uh, cream cheese and being introduced to, like, um, corned beef or... Um, you know, that sandwich, uh, pastrami on rye and all of those, like the food, like the iconic, uh, New York pizza and stuff like that. Just having that excitement. I'm like, oh my God, I'm trying something new, but I still do have that in me. I'm still very excited about trying new things all the time. And in fact, um, that's part of who I am. I like to try out new things. And I think you can never really run out of new things to try every single time. But um, it's just, I miss that old part of me who wasn't jaded, you know, and who had like a fresh, fresh look at uh, America and was really thinking that America was this you know, greater than what it actually is, you know. I don't know if I make sense, but yeah, I kind of miss that, that excitement that I had, which maybe will never come back, you know. I may never be as excited as I was um, because I think that's just life. But anyway, I've been ranting and... I hope that, you know, if you agree with me, um, write me at homeofgenie at gmail.com. If you don't agree with me, it's okay. (laughs) Just write me and comment anyway. What was, if you are in America, you're Filipino, what was your first impressions of America and what was the reality that you later found out, you know? Um, And thank you for listening.